Problems that involve ratio and proportion are ubiquitous. We see them everywhere. We see them in currency conversion, percentages, discount and markup, simple interest, measurement, quantity versus cost, maps and scales including Google Earth, Google Maps and GPS, computing the number of files versus storage space re required, travel, distance versus time, cooking, weights and measures, geometry and trigonometry relying on similarity and right angles, direct and inverse variation, chemistry. It's the start of a fairly big list. A ratio is a multiplicative comparison be two quantities, between two quantities. A proportion is a relationship of equality between two ratios. We say that two ratios are in proportion when they are equal. A ratio is often expressed as a fraction and a proportion can then be expressed as an equivalent fraction pair. Problems that involve direct variation are solved using equivalent fraction pairs. The, the fr equivalent fraction pair can be transposed algebraically or visually to give the rule of three and from there a solution can be easily determined. Tables provide a useful scaffold for ratio and proportion problems for all users and also an easy means for differentiating such problems in the classroom. When students create a table for these types of problems they should be encouraged to use headings for both rows and columns and these headings then assist them in creating the correct equivalent fraction pair. For any ratio and proportion problem there are actually four correct equivalent fraction pairs. We can see these four by simply rotating the table. Here we have an equivalent fraction pair a over D equals B over C and here it is in a table. Now we can rotate this table clockwise so from A over D, B over C we have D over C equals A over B, C over B equals D over A and B over A equals C over D. If we're trying to find A then we can use the rule of three. So here A is going to be equal to B times D divided by C. That is the values at each end of the hypotenuse multiplied together divided by the value at the right angle. If we see over here B times D divided by C again B times D divided by C again and B times D divided by C again. So it doesn't matter what orientation the table has, we can still use the rule of three to get the correct value or the correct relationship. When a student makes a table, their rows and columns may be different to the rows and columns that you as a teacher might suggest, but they may still have a table that has valid equivalent fraction pairs. The dimensions of each ratio in an equivalent fraction pair simply need to be the same units or the same rate. If the rows have different units, then we can also develop the unit rate that is associated with the problem, again using the rule of three. So here I've got A over D equals B over C and the unit rate is 1 is to X. So we can calculate X. X equals 1 times C divided by B or X equals 1 times D divided by A. So there it is. Similarly for Y here. Y equals B times 1 over C, which is just B over C, or Y equals A times 1 over D, so that's A over D. There it is. The unit ratio is then 1 is to X or Y is to 1. If the row headings are units, then the column headings are what we are given or reference information and to the problem we wish to solve, or vice versa if the column headings are units. So here we write out the table, there's headings for the columns 
headings for the rows. So we have our reference information here and here and our problem information here and here. By encouraging students to make a table we teach them a piece of scaffolding that helps solve problems. In addition students need to reflect on the problem so as to assign headings to rows and columns rather than rush to punch numbers into a calculator. The method of making a table and using the rule of three opens r ratio and proportion problems to all students, not just the more able. Tables can also be used for inverse variation. So here y equals k over x. We see y over 1 equals k over x. So x equals k times 1 divided by y. So that's k over y k equals y times x divided by 1. Tables can also be used for trigonometry. Sine is just a ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. So we can write it as sine theta over 1 equals opposite over hypotenuse. And here's our table. So in the end, if it's possible to put a problem in a 2x2 two two table, then it's likely that that problem can be solved using the rule of three as a scaffold. Tables make ratio and proportion very easy.